Number 7. Joshua Cavett In the fall of 2013, Oregon woman Jesse Cavett was looking to divorce her 36-year-old biker husband Joshua. Jesse, aged 27, had also filed a restraining order against a man who, in the past, had threatened to peel her skin off layer by layer and give her a fatal drug injection. Joshua's highly aggressive and paranoid behavior was attributed to drug use but also to a brain injury he'd sustained from a beating meant as an induction to a biker gang. He belonged to the notorious Gypsy Jokers, an outlaw motorcycle club whose membership was exclusively white. Some of Joshua's face and neck tattoos were indicative of his allegiance. On October the 12th, he and Jesse were arguing at the latter's Gresham apartment about visitation rights for their young daughter, Peyton. As tensions escalated, he shot the mother of four in the head. Peyton and another of Jesse's children were home at the time of the shooting. In the aftermath, Joshua fled with his daughter and left the other child behind with her dying mother. She called a friend, who in turn alerted the authorities. Roughly 10 hours after the incident, the biker was recognized from an Amber Alert and arrested near his apartment. His daughter was unharmed in the incident. At Joshua's home and in his backpack, law enforcement found several firearms as well as a bulletproof vest. Under a plea bargain, he admitted murder as well as felon in possession of a firearm and felon in possession of body armor. He was sentenced to life in prison with parole available after 28 years. Number 6. Herbert Nixon Flores Harrowing home surveillance footage from the Pacoima section of Los Angeles showed a gang member gunning down his estranged girlfriend at point-blank range on January the 6th of 2021. 31-year-old Karen Ruiz was in the process of dropping her daughter off when another car pulled up behind her SUV. Ruiz started screaming, ran towards the doorway and began banging on the door. A man emerged from the second vehicle and chased her with a pistol in hand. He was identified as 46-year-old Herbert Nixon Flores, Ruiz's estranged partner and the father of her child. He shot her six times at point blank range and then fled. The FBI Fugitive Task Force, who was called to assist in his apprehension, described Flores as a member of MS-13, often referred to as the most dangerous and ruthless gang in the world. Investigators learned that after the killing, Flores planned to visit family northwest of Dallas, Texas. The city's air units and ground patrol tracked him down on a roadway in the Irvine area, realizing he was being tailed. The man abandoned his vehicle and continued on foot. Then, as law enforcement was closing in, Flores fatally shot himself. Number 5. Ricardo Barbado At some point between April the 28th and May the 4th of 2020, Australian woman Ellie Price was knifed to death at her South Melbourne townhouse. Once 26-year-old Price's body was discovered with fatal injuries to the back and neck, a manhunt was launched for her on-again, off-again boyfriend, Ricardo Barbado. He was the last person seen leaving Price's home on April the 29th and had recently been released from jail for assaulting her. He'd reportedly smashed the single mother's head into the dashboard of his car, splitting open her eyebrow. As reported by Price's mother, Barbaro had also choked and threatened to kill her in the past. Within less than a week of the body's discovery, he was apprehended in Sydney and extradited to Victoria. Barbaro allegedly had ties to the Calabrian Mafia and Price, who previously worked as an exotic dancer, was believed to have been caught up in his criminal activity. She was in the process of extorting her friend and reported father figure, Mark Gray, at the time of her death. Price threatened to falsely accuse the 54-year-old of abusing her if he didn't give her $100,000. The man agreed to transfer the first of four $25,000 payments, but evidence suggested that the money was actually meant for Barbaro. The latter denied the murder charge and his trial was ongoing as of the latest updates. Number 4. David Obregón Castro a love triangle ended in bloodshed on May the 23rd of 2018, when a woman was stabbed to death on the balcony of her apartment in Toronto, Canada. That month, Sarah Lopez Iglesias discovered that her drug dealer boyfriend, David Obregón Castro, had cheated on her. The scorned woman confronted love rival Abigail Elliott, aged 21, behind the latter's apartment at 70 Spadina Avenue 
During the fight, Elliot bit Iglesias in the face while one of her male friends struck her in the head with a pipe. Obregón Castro was enraged that Lopez Iglesias had been hurt in the confrontation, even though he was also reported to have been abusive towards her in their relationship. The couple, both in their late 20s at the time, burst into Elliot's apartment on May the 23rd. Obregón Castro quickly let off two shots from his revolver, aiming at Elliot and one of her two male companions present in the home at the time. Elliot was then stabbed multiple times on the balcony, eventually succumbing to her injuries. The couple was arrested a few days after the woman's death, but neither initially took responsibility for the fatal stabbing. In a letter that Lopez Iglesias had written her boyfriend after the incident, she professed her love for him and claimed they were Bonnie and Clyde. The jury eventually accepted that Lopez Iglesias was a battered woman consumed by jealousy and a toxic relationship who'd been pressured into going to the apartment by her boyfriend. Leading up to Elliot's murder, the man had reportedly spiraled out of control as he'd slashed a childhood friend across the face with a knife and shot a rival dealer twice in the legs. The jury acquitted Lopez Iglesias and found Obregón Castro guilty of second-degree murder. Number 3. Fatherine Deonta Greer In the summer of 2022, a young man connected to rapper Young Thug was arrested in Georgia for gunning down his girlfriend. Young Thug, Jeffrey Lamar Williams by his real name, had recently been arrested as part of an extensive racketeer-influenced and corrupt organization's investigation. The prominent rapper was identified as the head and co-founder of a violent street gang called Young Slime Life. According to an 88-page indictment, the gang had been responsible for multiple murders, shootings and car thefts, spanning over a decade. It wasn't clear if fathering Deonta Greer, Young Thug's nephew, was connected to the operation, but that aspect was largely eclipsed by the killing of his girlfriend. In July of 2022, officers responded to reports of a shooting on the 4000 block of Fox Hunt Lane in East Point. They came upon the lifeless body of 24-year-old Destiny Fitzpatrick lying in a pool of blood by the front door. Greer, who was found crying at the residence, initially told them he'd fought off a pair of armed intruders. He was arrested and charged with murder after eventually admitting that he'd shot Fitzpatrick in the face. Neighbors told law enforcement that they'd heard the couple arguing in the home prior to the sound of gunfire. Number 2. Simon Brittle for four months leading up to early May of 2013, British woman Heidi Smith from Nottingham, England, had been dating fellow motorcycle enthusiast Simon Brittle. Their relationship was turbulent, ostensibly due to the man's violent behavior, and 44-year-old Smith had become too terrified of him to end it. Two days before an upcoming motorcycle rally, he threatened her on Facebook. Brittle told her to take plenty of bodyguards and that he was looking forward to beating her up cautioning that she had no idea what he was capable of. During the event held on May the 4th in South Dalton, East Yorkshire, an intoxicated Brittle became loud and aggressive, accusing Smith of having slept with another man. He then viciously attacked her with punches. Brittle forcefully twisted the woman's arm before taking her to the ground and straddling her. In the context of a crowd and loud music, many of the bystanders thought the couple was in a loving embrace. One of Smith's friends realized that she was being attacked and tried to intervene. It was then that Brittle lowered his head like he was going to kiss Smith and proceeded to sink his teeth into her nose. The woman let out a chilling scream before she fell backwards and clutched her bloodied face. She was left with a gaping hole where her nose used to be. Smith was rushed to the hospital where surgeons used skin from her hip to mend the injury, but the end result was what the woman described as a pointy witch appearance. She subsequently moved from the home she'd lived for more than a decade because Brittle knew her address. The man subsequently pleaded guilty to wounding with intent and was jailed for eight years. Number 1. Joshua Vallum Joshua Vallum, a member of the Latin Kings gang, was sentenced to 49 years in prison in May of 2017 in the aftermath of the first ever transgender hate prosecution in the US. Vallum told the authorities that he'd been dating teenager Mercedes Williamson for a few months. She'd been born male but transitioned to female, an aspect of which Vallum initially claimed to have been unaware. 
On May the 30th of 2015, they reportedly became intimate at the home of his father in Loosedale, Mississippi. 28-year-old Valum, according to his initial testimony, discovered that she was transgender and killed her in a panic. He shot Williamson with a stun gun, stabbed her multiple times in the head and then beat her to death with a claw hammer. Valum was arrested and in the early stages of the legal proceedings associated with his case, told the court, I killed Mercedes and she's in hell now, citing that he felt secure in his relationship to God. His panic defense soon started to falter. Williamson's best friend, whom had lived with the slain teen, reported that she and Valum had slept together numerous times and even expressed their love for each other. The FBI found many explicit photos and videos of men on his phone, contradicting his supposed bias. The gang member ultimately admitted the truth, pleading guilty to murder with a hate crime stipulation. He admitted that he'd known Williamson was transgender, an aspect that he'd kept secret from all others in his life, and that they'd had an ongoing and consensual intimate relationship. Valum planned to kill her out of fear after a friend found out about her gender identity. The man was worried that his fellow Latin kings would also learn about their romance, which the gang forbade and violently punished them. He located Williamson at her Alabama residence, lured her to Mississippi under a false pretense and then brutally murdered her. Number 7. Christopher Coleman In 2011, professional bodyguard Christopher Coleman was brought to trial for murdering his wife and two sons. The 34-year-old worked as the head of security for high-profile televangelist Joyce Mayer. He and his family resided in a quaint suburban neighborhood near the city of Waterloo, Illinois. Their idyllic lives were shattered when Coleman's wife Sherry and two children, Garrett and Gavin, were found dead inside their home. Months prior, Coleman had received threats against him and his family via an unknown email address. Local police subsequently began regularly patrolling the Coleman's residence and the surrounding area to ensure their safety. Coleman had gone to the gym at around 6 a.m. on the morning of May the 5th of 2009. After finishing his workout, he called home, ostensibly to check in on his family. No one answered the phone, however, which prompted Coleman to call his neighbor, a policeman called Justin Barlow. The latter was accompanied by fellow police officer Jason Don John when he entered the Coleman's home on the former bodyguard's request. The two men discovered the threatening messages had been plastered all over the interior of the house in blood-red paint. As the search progressed, the officers found Sherry and the two boys strangled to death in their beds. During the ensuing investigation, the police discovered several pieces of evidence that pointed to Coleman himself as the triple homicide's most promising suspect. The email address that was used to threaten the Colemans in the months prior to the incident had been created on Christopher Coleman's computer. The graffiti found on the walls of the house was likewise determined to have been written by Coleman. Perhaps most damning of all evidence stacked against the celebrity bodyguard was his extramarital affair with Tara Lintz, a childhood friend of his wife's. The two reportedly struck up a relationship in November of 2008. Believing he would be fired from his job if he divorced his wife, Coleman instead devised a plan to murder his own family in order to marry his mistress without consequence. He was ultimately given a life sentence without the possibility of parole. In the years following his conviction, Coleman has constantly maintained his innocence. He attempted to appeal his sentence on multiple occasions to no avail. Number 6. Alexandra Benella The top security aide to French President Emmanuel Macron was found guilty of assaulting two young protesters in an incident that occurred during the 2017 May Day demonstrations in Paris. A video surfaced from the anti-capitalist protests that depicted Macron's bodyguard, Alexandre Benella, repeatedly striking a young man and grabbing a young woman by the neck while wearing a police helmet. Benella was not a member of law enforcement, however, and he had been given leave from his post in Macron's security detail to attend the demonstrations as an observer. Following the dissemination of the video online, Benella was fired from President Macron's staff and officially charged for beating up the demonstrators. Investigators also found that the former presidential bodyguard had been illegally carrying a firearm during public outings with Macron. Bodyguards were only authorized to be armed while stationed at party headquarters. Prosecutors pursued further charges in connection with Benella's consulting business, particularly operations that entailed traveling to Africa and Israel. The ex-bodyguard reportedly used 
fake documents to obtain the passports he later used for his international business trips. For all the criminal charges levied against him, Bonello was sentenced to a three-year jail term in May of 2021. He circumvented actual prison time, however. Two of the three years were suspended, and he was mandated to wear an electronic bracelet for the third and final year of the sentence. Number 5. Cyril Azar A former bodyguard to the Malaysian Prime Minister was arrested and charged with the murder of a 28-year-old Mongolian woman who allegedly possessed sensitive information regarding high-level government officials. Cyril Azar, aged 43, was on the security detail assigned to Najib Razak, who served as Malaysia's sixth Prime Minister from April of 2009 to May of 2018. When he was still a police commando, Azar carried out the murder of Altantuya Sharabu, a French-speaking translator and model believed to have become privy to shady financial dealings involving some of the most prominent figures within Malaysia's government. During subsequent court proceedings, it emerged that Altantuya had told Azar that she was pregnant just moments before he fatally shot her in the head in a jungle clearing outside of Kuala Lumpur. To eliminate evidence of the execution, the commando detonated military-grade explosives in close proximity to Altantuya's remains, leaving nothing but bone fragments behind. Azar and the second security officer, Azila Hadri, were eventually convicted of the crime and sentenced to death in 2009 after a trial that had lasted 159 days. They were acquitted of all charges in 2013, following a decision by the Court of Appeals that sparked tremendous controversy among the Malaysian general public. The acquittal was overturned by the federal court in 2015, and Azar, who'd been living in Queensland, Australia, with his 15-year-old son, was brought back into custody by Australian authorities. In the years since Altantuya's murder, the former prime minister and employer to the two individuals found guilty has consistently denied any knowledge of or involvement in the crime. Number 4. Abdulaziz al Fahim. General Abdulaziz al Fahim had served as the chief bodyguard to multiple members of the Saudi royal court prior to being gunned down in September of 2019. Saudi Arabia's state-run press agency reported that al Fahim was killed during a contentious dispute in the Red Sea port of Jeddah. The general was visiting a friend's summer home when another acquaintance, Mamdou bin Mishal al-Ali, arrived unexpectedly. The group became embroiled in an argument that turned violent when al-Ali brandished a gun and opened fire. Saudi law enforcement converged at the scene and surrounded the house in which the gunman had barricaded himself. A gunfight broke out and al-Ali was killed, but not before five security officers suffered non-fatal gunshot wounds of their own. General al Fagem passed away from his injuries later that day while being treated at the hospital. The sitting Saudi monarch, King Salman, urged regional intelligence authorities to gather information that might help explain the attack that had taken the life of his top bodyguard. Following al Fagem's death, speculation arose as to whether the shooting was actually a targeted attack by the disgruntled Saudi Crown Prince. The editor-in-chief of the Arab Times reported that a hidden coup had begun to emerge from within the royal court and al Fagem was caught in the crossfire of the alleged power struggle between King Salman and Crown Prince Mohammed bin Zayed. It was also reported that al Fagem was killed because he possessed information about the infamous death of Saudi Arabian journalist Jamal Khashoggi. Number 3. Pascal Duvier After celebrity bodyguard Pascal Duvier allowed Kim Kardashian to be robbed at gunpoint while she was under his watch, he was let go from his position on the influencer security team and subsequently faced a $6.1 million lawsuit from her insurer. In October of 2016, Kardashian and her sisters Courtney and Kendall were in France, attending the semi-annual Paris Fashion Week. They were accompanied on the trip by Duvier who'd long served as a bodyguard for the famous family. Kardashian was alone at the private apartment in which they were staying when she was accosted by five armed robbers disguised as police officers. The incident took place while her two sisters were at a nightclub under Duvier's supervision. Kardashian was bound and gagged and subsequently locked in the bathroom. The thieves absconded with $10 million worth of jewelry. Duvier came under heavy fire following the robbery. Many questioned why he'd allowed Kardashian to be left without any protection at the apartment while he was out with her sisters. Some even proposed that there was a grander plot in which he'd conspired with the robbers. 
but such speculations remain unproven. The multi-millionaire's insurer, American International Group, ultimately took legal action against the experienced bodyguard. They sued Duvier and his company, Protect Security, for negligence. Although the $6.1 million suit was eventually settled outside of court, Duvier parted ways with the Kardashians just a month after the incident in Paris. He continued to work with well-known celebrities even after his termination and, in July of 2021, was seen escorting singer Adam Levine around Miami. Number 2. The Assassination of Indira Gandhi On October 31, 1984, Indian Prime Minister Indira Gandhi was shot and killed inside her New Delhi residence. The assassination was carried out by Gandhi's Sikh bodyguards, Satwan Singh and Bian Singh, as a form of revolt against the Prime Minister's anti-Sikh actions and policies. The bodyguards had made the decision to eliminate the woman they'd sworn to protect following a military operation launched by the Indian government against Jarnail Singh Bindranwali, the leader of the orthodox Sikh religion. The week-long military action was codenamed Operation Blue Star, and its primary objective was to remove Bindranwali and his followers from the Holy Golden Temple of the Harminda Sahib. Loss of life was experienced on both sides of the violent conflict, and the Sikh holy shrine was damaged during the fighting. Gandhi and the rest of her government received widespread backlash as a result of Operation Blue Star. The Intelligence Bureau removed the Sikhs that were assigned to serve as Gandhi's personal bodyguards for fear of a potential assassination attempt. In an effort to improve her anti-Sikh image, however, the Prime Minister reinstated her Sikh bodyguards, including the two men who would eventually execute her. On the morning of her death, Gandhi was scheduled to be interviewed by British actor Peter Ustinov for a documentary, but as she walked through the grounds of the Prime Minister's estate, she was fatally shot by Satwan Singh and Bian Singh as they stood watch at a wicket gate. Biant was captured and killed by border police officers later that day, while Satwant was arrested by Gandhi's other bodyguards. He was eventually hanged in 1989 along with a co-conspirator in the assassination plot. Number 1. Leopold McLean In November of 2010, veteran New York City policeman Leopold McLean, aged 49, fired multiple shots at his girlfriend's former lover and was consequently sent to prison. In addition to his service within the ranks of the NYPD, McLean also worked as the personal bodyguard to former New York City Mayor Mike Bloomberg. Prior to the incident that would result in his seven-year prison term, McLean had driven Mayor Bloomberg's daughter, Georgina, back home after she'd attended a New York Knicks game at Madison Square Garden. That same night, McLean then went to visit his girlfriend, Asia Winfield, who lived in Jamaica, Queens. Upon arriving at Winfield's residence, the policeman reportedly found the Paul Gammons, the woman's ex-boyfriend, standing outside with a knife in his grasp. By being present at the house, Gammons was in violation of a restraining order that Winfield had against him. McLean brandished his service weapon and shot Gammons twice in the back as he ran away. Winfield and McLean then contacted the authorities and told them of Gammons' attempt to enter her home while armed with a knife. They neglected to report the fact that McLean had shot the man during the ensuing altercation. The officer, who'd spent 19 years on the force, was taken into custody and charged with attempted murder once the truth was uncovered. The situation caused him to miss out on getting his pension, which would have taken effect only two months after the time of his arrest. During McLean's criminal trial, Winfield revealed that she'd been in contact with Gammons throughout the course of her relationship with the officer. The woman also admitted to visiting Gammons in jail and accepting two cars he offered to her daughter, in spite of the fact that she'd filed multiple complaints against him. Thanks for watching. Would you rather serve as one of the Queen's Guard in front of Buckingham Palace or have a constant itch on the bottom of your foot that you can never satisfy? Let us know in the comments section below.